nothing wrong with having fun with this type of material, especially out of one of the greatest DC comic heroes of all time. I myself can find different ways of having fun with this game, besides doing your main mission objective. Like you can ride the slide down when you're in the carnival world. And as silly as Robin is, yes, he can even take a ride on the little kitty ride. He's probably thinking, yo Batman, can I take a ride on the little kitty ride? Come on, I want to go on the kitty ride. No, we gotta fight some crime. It's no more kiddying around. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yippee, yippee. to this dance club place when you have to do this mission. It looks sort of like a Dance Dance Revolution type thing. And then it starts playing a remix version of the Danny Elfman theme. And it brings up this giant dancing robot. Okay, you know what this all means. Time for the bat dance. start playing ice hockey in Mr. Freeze's lair. Thank God. Speaking of dancing, look at Robin when he tries to tackle and punch someone. Yeah, looks like he's dancing. Can I have this dance? Hilarious. It's even fun to just go inside the bat cave. The detailing in the dark style looks absolutely great. And look at this. Is that supposed to be Alfred? Yeah, of course, the butler Alfred. You know what? It's time for him to retire. Boom! He's dead. And, whoa, what the hell? He just came back. Man, it's like this guy literally never dies. Okay, time to kill him again. Boom! Alright, that's enough of that. I'm getting really off track. So of course when you complete the game, you may think that's it, right? It seems kind of short. Just Batman and Robin and that's it? But no, that's not it. You actually get to play as the villains, too. And to tell you the truth, it's actually more fun to play as the villains. Yeah, I mean, it's true. You actually enjoy it, but you feel guilty afterwards. I mean, that's what it is. It's a guilty pleasure. Now, I don't mind this so much. It's a pretty cool idea. It extends the game a lot further, but... This was called Lego Batman, right? Not Lego Batman and Robin, Mr. Freeze, Poison Ivy, Bane, and other characters that aren't Batman. I mean, obviously, I guess this game went beyond that. When you play as a villain, you're usually teaming up with another villain that's picked at random. You can only play as that villain, and yes, you can switch back and forth between them. Of course, there are a few villains, and I didn't even know this, that can actually walk over and throw acid water. The only ones I know that can do that are Two-Face, Poison Ivy, and of course, Killer Croc. Each villain has their own unique ability, but at least it doesn't require a power-up suit like with Batman and Robin. No, they already have it. Of course, with Joker, he has a traditional hand buzzer. At first, I thought it was stupid and unnecessary, but now I realize you actually do need it for operating electronic devices. Because the other character obviously can't. Some characters can even jump higher, like of course Harley Quinn, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and Clayface. And some characters even have super strength, and they can actually pick up and move vehicles, or rip anything out that has a handlebar, like Clayface, Mr. Freeze, and of course Bane. Some characters can float farther, like of course Penguin with the umbrella, and Killer Moth with his wings. Catwoman of course has the whip. The Riddler uses a mind-controlling cane. Poison Ivy uses a gas to make plants grow. Penguin uses exploding wind-up penguins. And Mr. Freeze, well, freezes people. Duh! But no one-liner puns. But just about mostly every character has a gun. Yeah, no, they're not superheroes. Keep in mind, they're super villains. It is common to see this. And all you basically do is wreak havoc amongst Gotham. No matter what part of the city it is, whether it's in the carnival section, the city, anywhere. Blowing shit up, killing cops, and performing some of the biggest supervillain cliches of all time. And even going to the sewers, which I swear looks so much like and resembles Super Mario Brothers. Of course, you even get the vehicle mission.
missions, the planes, and the boats. And it's the same exact rules as when you play as the hero. One character gets one ability advantage over the other. And once again, it can be really tedious at some points. So that's our long, dark adventure to a gloomy Gotham City. It's definitely a fun journey with plenty of replay value to it, but can get a little repetitive at some points. But if you're a fan of Batman and you've exhausted every Batman game, I would definitely check this one out. It may not be as good as Arkham Asylum, but it's far from being the worst. So, that's Lego Batman on the Xbox 360 for you. I finally got that review out of the way, and I think it's a well-deserving of a... Just a plain, but rockin' to your remote up because, well, it's Batman. I mean, how could you go wrong? Even though it seem, may seem kiddie-ish and stupid at some point, still, it's well worth it. It still has some great replay value to it. So, do I think this game belongs on Arkham Asylum? Of course not. It's still pretty enjoyable, even to today, but compared to the other Batman games we have out now which are far superior than this game, yeah, of course it doesn't live up to those games, but still, it's just plain fun. So, until next time, and until of course Arkham City comes out, happy gaming.